So I had this idea of painting pairs. I really like the repeating shape, the simple shape, and the overlap of three simple geometric shapes. So um, I've been sketching out watercolors recently using a watercolor pencil. I like what happens to the pencil lines as I begin to add paint. Those pencil lines begin to dissolve away. In some cases they they stick around, they don't go away entirely, but in other cases they kind of blend out into the uh, paint. This is a, a new technique for me. I've been using pen and adding watercolor over the top of those pen lines and um, using a pencil with watercolor. And while that's a traditional approach, uh, using a a watercolor pencil is something I've never done before. Now I'm calling it a new approach for me but um, I have always done it with gouache. It just doesn't react the same way with the thick opaque paint in gouache that it does when you're using uh, transparent watercolor. I'm kind of evaluating as I go, uh, designing as I go along. I've got a sketch to go by, but you know I don't feel obligated to make my finished drawing look exactly like that sketch. Still, I'll just keep thinking about it as I'm as I'm as I'm scribbling it out with a pencil. Uh, my first step in this case is to start to apply clear water. I'm going to use this to make some uh, wet and wet decisions with color. As I lay down the uh, wash of clear water, it's important to note that what I'm accomplishing by doing this is uh, it's helping me to create edges as I, as I paint. So on the side that I'm painting on right now, which is in the middle of the pair, um, there's going to wind up being some really soft edges. Color is going to blend into each other, but as it goes up to the edge of where the water stops, I'll get a nice hard edge. And the water is just going to, or the watercolor paint is actually just going to kind of bleed over to that on its own. The colors I'm working with today are definitely not real. They're really more designy than they are representational. Um, there's kind of a uh, rainbowish kind of thing happening here. I'm looking at contrast between complementary colors and contrast between uh, some light and dark areas, and then just enjoying the color. It's kind of a, a Zen type approach to sketching, uh, just enjoying the color as it begins to blend from one color to the other. I wound up using a couple of different brushes in this painting. I started out with this brush that's got kind of a combination between a, a flat and a, a, a point like you would find on a really fine round brush. Um, not sure that I felt like that was working really well as I painted. Um, I wound up changing it here in a little while when I got off of this first pear shape. But for right now, I just continued painting using that brush. Um, you can see where the paint is just kind of going right up to the edge of the outside edge of the uh, shape all on its own because that's where I painted the water to. And that helps me uh, to, to not have to be as precise as I'm painting. Um, when I'm working on something like this, I'm really more into laying the colors down and thinking about those colors than I am uh, wanting to think about the exact edges of things. I really need to add a different red to my palette. That cadmium red light just has an opacity that doesn't always work as nicely with the other colors on my palette as it exists right now. You can see how it just has a, a chunkiness to the color that uh, 
isn't quite as elegant as those translucent and transparent colors that you see above it. Um, still, I do work with it. I, I like the color. Um, it's really nice to see it blend into other colors. I just wish it were a little bit more transparent. I have added a couple of new oranges to my palette, uh, one of which you can see up there by the blue at the top of the pear, and a pyrrole orange, I think that's how it's pronounced, um, that's a little deeper and denser, and I will use that uh, in here in a little while. You can see it up on my experimentation card in the upper right-hand corner. It's the darker of the two oranges. And, um, you know, it's, it's actually pretty close to the uh, cadmium red light in a lot of ways, and uh, it's really more of a semi-transparent, whereas the cadmium red light is more opaque or maybe a semi-opaque. So as I paint, uh, sometimes I stop for a second just to kind of look at it, see what I need to do next. I felt like I needed to put just a little weight down here at the bottom, so I begin to darken up that edge to see what I can do. I've, I've got a, uh, a violet that I added to test out recently. I'm a little disappointed with how weak that is. You can see it up on my uh, test card in the upper right hand corner next to the two oranges that I've added. Um, it's just kind of wimpy looking. Uh, over here on the second shape that I've begun, um, the water is not perfectly clean. That's okay uh, in this case because I want this to be a little bit darker shape to begin with. Uh, there's not going to be any white showing up in this. And uh, when the water is tinted a little bit, like you see it right now, uh, it, it helps for the colors to hold together. So we, we get a little bit of uh, color harmony by tinting that underneath. This blue turned out really nice. Um, it's a mixture of cobalt blue and ultramarine blue. Um, they aren't necessarily uh, independent of each other. Sometimes the warmth of the uh, ultramarine blue and the rather more neutral blue of cobalt um, tends to work really well together, especially when I'm going to do as I'm doing here and put some greens in it. I don't want these to be super intense greens. Uh, instead, I've, I've kind of deadened them just a little bit. Um, you can see the, uh, the uh, two or three different greens I used in the first shape really have a uh, cooler appearance and these greens are a little warmer and uh, that helps in my mind it kind of helps for them to ultimately separate from the uh, from the first shape while still kind of holding together I kind of regret going with this earth tone uh, on the shadow side of this second pair I wish I'd gone with something a little bit brighter, a little bit cooler. Um, that violet, as I said, I tried to mix that in with it and uh, it's just it's just not very overpowering of a color. And in fact the the uh, earth tone that I've got mixed in with it is is simply overpowering the uh, the cool violet color. Did make for a nice stem shape though. I'm having to think here about what I want to do with the top side of that second pair. Um, I had thought to bring that violet up there and I'm going to add a little density up there since the violet isn't doing what I would like. So this density is actually taking on more of a deeper green as opposed to the rather more cool violet that I had originally thought I might put in here. Meanwhile, what's really nice about watercolor when you're working wet and wet, um, as the colors begin to dry back and they stop moving uh, in the wet paper, and the paper's drying up, um, we start to see what the end 
coloration is going to look like. So you see if you compare the first pair to the second pair, that, that second pair is still rather wet and the first pair uh, is beginning to dry up and so we're starting to see what the colors are going to wind up doing. Watercolor is kind of a uh, uh, predictive type of media. In other words, you have to sort of predict or anticipate what those colors are going to wind up doing. How much are they going to dry back? How much of the potency of the color and the pigmentation are you going to lose as it dries back? And, and this changes from one paper to another. Uh, the Arches paper that I've got here maintains some of the, uh, the color intensity but uh, the paper I prefer, which is Strathmore Aquarius, uh, it, it maintains quite a bit more, I think, of the color intensity. So now as I start this third shape and I start to lay in the uh, wash of clear-ish, it's not entirely clear, but clear-ish water, um, I'm thinking about how to differentiate this shape from the others. And so I'm, I'm thinking about contrasting uh, colors. And you can see the yellow. It's kind of a complement uh, over to the side here in this second one um, between those two shapes. And uh, I still want it to hold together uh, harmoniously. But at the same time, I don't want them all to blend together like they're just one duplication uh, of, of the shape from right to left. Um, that pink makes me think about uh, what I can do with adding some blue. And I really haven't put a powerful ultramarine in here yet and starting to use some of that in here right now. Uh, letting it bleed down. You can see it kind of bleed down there and uh, letting it go into uh, some of this this uh, orangish color. When those two mix together it, it it helps to create a little bit of a neutral tone and I I was just I remember thinking as I painted this that um, what I wanted to do was get a little bit new of neutral color happening up there behind uh, the the first pair and on that third pair um, just to separate them a little bit. This approach really demands that you put away a part of the rational part of your brain um, that wants you to put shadows in and to, uh, and to imitate the actual color of of the objects. I think it's interesting that uh, that although I've got these very unrealistic colors on here, um, I can still sort of imagine the green of the pears uh, coming through on there. And it's uh, partly because I am using some greens and some lime greens in here, but uh, there's definitely not a pear that I've seen that has that, that intense bright pink on it or, or blue on it. And yet at the same time, it, it isn't terribly distracting to me that these, uh, that these colors have become more of an abstraction uh, than a reality of the pair. Now, I started to think that I needed something to plant it to the lower part of the page. Otherwise, they sort of look like they're free falling in space. And so I mixed up this batch of blue and started to paint a uh, shadow across an imaginary uh, tabletop that these are sitting on. And what to do, what to do over here on the right hand side, um, not exactly sure. Meanwhile, I'll put off making a decision by adding a little bit of an almost opposite color here into the blue shadow. And again, while I continue to put off making a decision about that other side, I go ahead and paint the stem in here and just think a little bit more. Pausing. Gosh, what am I going to do here? 
Well, I think I'll take some of this violet color and put it down here. See what that looks like. And maybe think about having the blue blend into it just a little bit. Well there, that's that's kind of interesting. I don't mind that at all. All right, well, so let's think about the background. And I'm probably going to kind of wet this a little bit. Get it nice and damp, get myself a nice edge here. And um, I, do, I do have to be careful about this. I don't want to accidentally hit some area that's still still pretty wet and uh, get an unexpected bleed of color coming over but to be completely honest it probably will happen as I work along here and uh, if it does I'm not gonna worry about it too much Okay, so let's take some of this bright yellow color in here. And remember I said that I was, uh, I had in mind that I was going to be working with opposites, with complements of color and almost complements of color. And uh, this yellow is almost an orange. In fact, uh, it, it actually is labeled an orange as much as I think of it as just a, a super intense yellowish color. It's more of a yellow orange, but um, I'm going to lay that down. And now I'm picking up some of that pyrrole orange and laying it over on this other side and blending it together over here. And I'm going to let the water do its, do its job. It'll eventually blend it out here as we go along. I'm not too sure if I want to add any more of that to this little sketch. I think I'm just going to come in with the blue. And a bunch of this background is going to wind up being blue. And I'm going to go up to the edge of this. And uh, blue and orange don't naturally uh, blend together, so I'm trying to avoid it turning into a, a dead neutral color where the two colors meet but uh, I'd like to I'd like to take advantage of that intensity that occurs when the uh, complements begin to uh, begin to offset each other and it kind of creates I, th I hope it's going to create kind of an interesting contrast so that my focal point still remains on that that pair that's in front of the other two. I will readily admit that I get a little uh, antsy as I'm painting in large areas of color. Um, I almost never mix up enough. I have to continue to mix up new batches of color as I'm going along. Uh, it's something that I should be better about, and I'm not. Um, but it does give me the opportunity to think about what I'm doing as I uh, as I paint, and uh, adding a little bit of this lime yellow just kind of feels right. It it helps me to keep the background from just simply being a, a mechanical flat color, and. Um, there's a hair I got to get off there. Sometimes it falls out of the brush. Uh, anyway, I'd like to avoid this having that mechanical kind of look, and I like there being a little bit of undulation, variation, 
as the color background goes down. Now, one thing I'm trying to keep in mind is that although I paint clear out here into what will ultimately be margin area, um, you know, I could change my mind about how I'm going to crop this later on. So I'm giving myself plenty of room in the uh, in the sketch to be able to make that that sort of adjustment later on. Um, but right now, in my mind, I'm going to be cropping this fairly tightly. And so I'm just kind of playing it better safe than sorry. Now look at this. I managed to get some paint into the middle of the of the back pair. I think that's going to come back and I'm going to have to do some more with that here in a little bit. I'm not going to focus on it too much. not going to worry about it too much. Perfection is the enemy of getting things done. All right, let's kind of clean up a little bit here, add uh, a cleaner line and maybe just a little depth there. And doggone it, I got I, I hit that pair again. I am I'm definitely going to have to clean that up. That's going to bother me. It's still not where I want it to be. I'm going to add a little bit of color here, clean that up. All right. That's a little better. Maybe I won't agonize over it later. 